Neil Rackham starts his book Spin Selling with some key advice. Don't trust what top performers tell you. We could surmise that it's so they can protect their secret sauce and maintain their competitive edge. But Rackham tells us it's not. By spending a significant number of hours, he and his team have pulled together the real answers and all the true information we need to take on board. Having spent time observing top performers, he's distilled their experience into a methodology we can all use to better our sales. Spin selling. Join us for the next 10 minutes or so to find out exactly what the methodology is and how best to use it. Lesson 1. A sales call in four stages. Nearly all effective sales calls can be broken down into four stages. Stage 1. The preliminaries. The warming up events at the start of a call. Rackham tells us that there's no better way of opening a sales call. Conventional wisdom says that if we can somehow tap into an area of personal interest of the buyer, we can form a relationship more quickly and the call will be more successful. For example, if there's a family photograph on the desk, talk family. If there's a golfing trophy, talk golf. But this is all conventional wisdom. It may have worked 10 years ago when the world was not as connected and people bought from people they liked or knew. Today, in the connected and distributed world, this is far from reality. The problem is greater with large sales when the transaction consists of many interconnected discussions and evaluations of your product or service, many taking place when you're not there. It's hard to be liked or be known by everyone in that loop. Today, we're more likely to hear, I like, enter your name here, but I buy from his competition because they're cheaper. Alternatively, we could make an opening benefit statement. Better performance is a key issue in your market today, sir, and our product can increase that tenfold. Again, conventional wisdom, but it's not effective. By immediately focusing on our perception of the buyer's needs, we're running the risk of alienating them and having them put up barriers. Who are you to tell them what they need? Who are you to offer unsolicited opinions? Rackham suggests the preliminaries, whilst needed to break the ice, are not as critical in the successful large scale. Instead, he suggests we should focus more on how long the preliminaries take. Too short, and we appear overly keen and abrasive. Too long, and the buyer can get bored and disengaged. So timing is critical, and time is precious. As a rule of thumb, Rackham advocates that it's best to err on the short side. No one has ever complained that a seller didn't waste their time. Get in, focus on your objectives, and get on to the more important stage, investigating. Stage 2. Investigating. Where spin begins. Use open questions to elicit fact. We've all heard that advice. Avoid questions that can be answered with a simple yes or no. Structure questions so they invite description. Take a leaf from Inspector Colombo and ask questions and investigate. In essence, this is the heart of spin selling, but it's not without structure. Rackham's methodology for investigating breaks down into four types of questioning. Situation, problem, implication, and finally, need payoff, or spin. Situation questions focus on establishing facts, finding out the background of the customer situation and what they're doing now. This is critical if we're to advance our opportunity. For a small sale, it's binary. There are only two stages, sale or no sale. For a larger sale, there are two more intermediate stages, continuation and advance. The continuation stage is effectively permission to keep talking. We may not be progressing rapidly, but at least we're moving in a forward motion and it's not termination of talk. The advanced stage is more positive. It's the cue to tell me more. So the more effective situation questions we ask, the more successful the interaction with the buyer will be and the better chance of advance. Situation questions get the buyer talking. Situation questions control attention, identify needs, and give clues. Rackham warns us, however, that situation questions persuade while reasons don't. Effectively, when we identify an interest in the buyer's response, we should avoid jumping in with reasons why our products meet their needs. There's more benefit to be accrued. Problem identification is the second element of spin. 
the potential buyer who is 100% satisfied with the way things are will not feel the need to change. Only when that level of satisfaction drops to 99.99% is there a chance of sale. What we need to do is establish where there may be a problem, and from that problem comes a need. It may start small, with the minor snags in a product or process, then develop into clear dissatisfaction, and finally to a want, desire, or intention to act. In each of these stages, the problem is amplified and the need increases. That is the objective of this stage, to ask questions to identify the problem and grow its perception to the action level. Problem identification is key. Without clear definition of the need, there is simply no need to buy. The third element of spin is implication. There are two types of need, implied and explicit. In the first type, we find more complaints. Our current systems don't do X, or I'm not happy with our product failure rate, are examples. In implied needs, there's a problem, but no real identification of how it can be resolved. This is not an issue to the spin seller. Indeed, developing implied needs is the key to breaking down 100% satisfaction and identifying the chink in the armor where our product or service can resolve. We need implication questions. Implication questions increase the buyer's perception of the problem's seriousness. Implication questions tip the balance from the status quo towards the new problem-free scenario. Rackham's research suggests decision makers will respond favorably to a salesperson who uncovers implications. In essence, we are helping them see beyond the now and into a better future. But there's a negative side. Sellers who raise too many implications can make the buyer feel negative or depressed. If we make problems greater, we need to give a way out, and that's the fourth element of spin. Need payoff. Need payoff. With implication, things are a bit open-ended. On the other hand, explicit needs are more defined. We need a faster system. We must have backup capability. These are explicit needs and point us, the seller, and the buyer in the same direction to problem resolution and sale. It's in this area Rackham suggests that a great salesperson excels. When they hear implied needs, they take notice and make the intangible tangible. They turn implied into explicit. Basically, need payoff questions build up the value or usefulness of the solution. Need payoff questions focus the buyer on problems and solutions, not problems and difficulties. Good need questions induce the buyer into personalizing the benefits of the solution, and with personalization comes adoption. By asking the buyer to verbalize their thoughts, we're effectively placing them as the expert, and everyone likes being considered an expert. This again, covertly moves the buyer into a positive decision. After all, it was their idea, wasn't it? Rackham reminds us, however, that for large sales, many discussions on the viability of our product or service takes place without us being there. By focusing on needs when present, we align discussion to the buyer's lens, their needs in their business, rather than to our product which perpetuates the need when we're not present. Step 3. Demonstrating Capability in many sales transactions, capability is demonstrated by informing the buyer of the features and advantages of the product or service. Better, however, according to Rackham, to focus on benefits. So what is the difference? Features describe facts, data, and product characteristics. They are merely statements, maybe of use in a small scale, but effectively neutral in larger scales. Advantages show how products or services or their features can help the customers. These bring some positivity, but more so in small sales than larger. Benefits, however, show how products or services meet explicit needs as expressed by the customer. A major barrier that may remain at this stage of the sales transaction are objections. If we do encounter them, then we've performed poorly in the earlier stages. Rackham says, rather than skilling up on objection handling, which is a regular focus of other sales training programs, we should focus on objection prevention. Back to need payoff questions. Most objections are to solutions that don't fit needs. The cure is simple. 
Don't talk about solutions until enough questions have been asked on needs. If objections are with costs, then again there's a weakness in needs alignment. If the solution fully addresses a need, and that need is critically perceived by the buyer, money will be less of an issue. So the crux of demonstrating capability is to ensure the buyer embraces the advantages and visualizes their use within their organization. Again, it's personalization, putting your solution in the center of your buyer's vision. Stage 4. Obtaining Commitment The journey is nearly over. We have three more activities to carry out. The first is to check that we've covered key concerns. In larger sales, both the product and customer needs are likely to be complex. As a result, there may be areas of confusion or doubt in the buyer's mind as commitment nears. Successful sellers take the initiative and ask the buyer whether there are further points that need to be addressed. If none, then purchase is one step closer. The next step is to summarize the benefits. It's unlikely that the buyer has a clear picture of everything that's been discussed. Successful salespeople pull the threads together by summarizing key points of the discussion before moving to commitment. Finally, we need to propose a commitment. Don't ask for an order. That's not proposing a commitment. That's not what successful salespeople do. Successful salespeople advance a sale. As a result of the commitment, the sale will move forward in some way. Remember the multiple conversations? The commitment is the highest realistic pledge they are able to give. Successful sellers don't push beyond this point. If an order is the commitment, well done. However, one step closer is better than nothing. So Rackham's spin succeeds. Here's his advice on how to become a spin doctor. Focus on the investigating stage. Develop questions in the spin sequence. Analyze your product in problem-solving terms. Plan, do, and review. Good luck and spin on. Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, Give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!